Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're doing a painting based on Mother 3. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. I'm going to be painting Chapter 6's Sunflower Fields, and um, without spoiling the game too much, this chapter deals with loss and missing someone. And if you haven't heard, I recently lost one of my cats, Sagan, um, and everything I had planned for this month with my painting didn't feel appropriate. I didn't, <laughs> it didn't make me want to paint and it didn't feel like something I should be doing. Um, and I looked at different ideas and this just felt right to me. So I thought I would paint that for this month and um, I really love this scene and even before all of this it really stuck out in memory and I had always wanted to paint it and it's kind of the reason I really love sunflowers. So um, I'm going to be starting with my sky, and I'm going to kind of keep the ratio of sunflower to sky the same as in the game, which is about two-thirds sunflower and one-third sky. And for my sky, I'm going to do just a slight gradient, um, just to kind of give it some depth so it's not just one solid blue. And I'm going to kind of mix up medium blue and a light blue and just do a little bit of a gradient up on the top. I've lightly drawn in a horizon line here on the canvas, two-thirds of the way up. Now this is there um, so that when I'm doing the blend between my two sky colors, it ends up here where you can see it and not like down here. This way I can start my lightest color on the line and work up, and my darkest color on the top and work down so that blend is somewhere up here, not behind the sunflowers. Now for those two blues that I have, I use some ultramarine blue, primary cyan, and titanium white. Now the blues mixed together are kind of a same ratio, it's about 50-50. And then the titanium white for each one of these is based on how bright it is. So the bottom one has a lot more titanium white, which is on the right here, and the left one has a lot less titanium white, so it's darker. And I'm going to start with the lightest color on my horizon line and work upwards, and then I'll start with the darker and then work it down into the lighter color. I've redrawn in my horizon line and lightly sketched in where the clouds are going to go. Now, unlike my last painting, these are front lit where those were back lit. So the edges of those were also titanium white, just like this is, but the sunlight was behind them, so they were mostly silhouette. These, the light's going to be kind of in front, so they're going to have lots of titanium white on their face. But I can't just only use titanium white because they're going to look very flat, so I have to build my darker colors in the bottom right and then work towards the titanium white on the top left. So for that, I'm going to be using some neutral gray, titanium white, cyan, and ultramarine blue. So I'm gonna start kind of with a mix of all of these for my darkest color, use a big bristle brush, and then just start to tap this in on the bottom rights of all the clouds. My colors for these clouds are going from kind of this blue-gray color, and the next one's going to be lighter with less blue, and then lighter with less blue, until it's just pure titanium white. So I'm just tapping this in with the brush here, just trying to keep it soft and fuzzy, just giving it a good base, and then I can start to add the next color in. So I'm just going to add a little bit to my brush, and then start to bring that here. And I want to kind of blend it into this um, darker color I have, so that it looks soft and fuzzy, that it doesn't have this hard edge on it. So I'm just gonna slowly tap in these lighter colors until I have it pure titanium white. Painting clouds always reminded me of a Bob Ross quote. Um, and it goes something um, about how in painting you have to have darks and lights. You can't just have all lights or there is no contrast. You won't see what you're painting. The same with darks. You can't just have all dark colors or you won't see what it is. And he equates it to life about how there has to be sadness so you can appreciate the happiness. And um, when I'm painting clouds, I'm always reminded of that. And I think it's something that's important to think of um, for everyone in everyone's life.
I've worked my way lighter and lighter, and it's time to add my final layer of pure titanium white. I'm switching to a clean brush for this because my other one has a lot of the blues in it because I wasn't washing it in between my colors, which is fine because it's just gonna blend naturally. But I wanna make sure that this bright white is super, super bright and intense. So that's why I've switched to a clean brush. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of the titanium white on my brush and just continue to tap in this just like I was the previous colors. Before I paint the sunflowers, I think I'm gonna make it easier on myself by doing a base layer of one of the darker colors that's in the sunflowers. So I've picked burnt sienna um, just to fill in this area and kind of just give it that base layer. That way I'm not worried about too much of this white canvas showing up. I just kind of have to build all of the petals and the lighter things on top of the burnt sienna. Based on the game and my sketch and looking at different pictures of sunflower fields, I think I actually need to start with a green base coat on the bottom. So I've just mixed up a green and I'm going to blend it up into the burnt sienna until I kind of have a little bit of a gradient here on the ground. So in my sketchbook, I had two areas that I could test sunflowers. And I started testing over here and I did one test that I didn't like and then I did a second test that I really liked. So then I stopped testing because I thought this one was really good. So over here, I tried using a fan brush and just kind of tapping in some far away stuff just to give the impression of sunflowers back there. And I didn't like how it looked. So um, I started again kind of doing a little bit of pointillism and I liked how that looked. So I kept up with that. And back here, it's just kind of variations um, of my different colors dotted onto the canvas. Hansa yellow, um, Hansa yellow with titanium white, um, Hansa yellow with um, burnt sienna, and then just a little bit of phthalo to bring in some green. So I started doing that to about here. And then once I got here where they start to be closer and the sunflowers are getting closer to us where we'll see more detail, I started to group petals so you can start to see the impression of the petals going around the center of the sunflower. And then once I got to about here, you can start to see like individual sunflowers um, in the field. And then once I got to the very bottom, they're a lot more detailed, there's a lot more color to them. I wanna take this idea and then kind of just refine it, make it a little bit more clean, especially down here on my canvas. So on the horizon, probably to about here, I'm going to be doing basically pointillism with all of those colors, just kind of tapping them into the canvas. When I first started working on the sunflowers, I had drawn in some of the centers where all the seeds go to give myself a good idea of how big they should be here on the canvas based on the center size, making sure that they got appropriately smaller the closer to the horizon they got. And then I did my test and I know I was gonna talk about how I was using a round brush to fill in all the petals and I didn't like how the fan looked. Even in the test, I used the fan brush to do some of the faraway areas. Um, it just fills it in a lot faster. 
because this is going to be a lot of different dots just to give the impression of sunflowers, I didn't want to sit there with a tiny brush doing all these tiny dots. I recently did that with my pointillism piece for Untitled Goose Game, and I know it took me forever. It's the longest um, work I've put into a painting um, probably in my entire life, and I know how long that takes. So I wanted to kind of speed it up, so I used the fan brush to tap in some Burnt Sienna Hansa Yellow, regular Hansa Yellow, and Hansa Yellow Titanium White to give some yellow to this area. Then I can go in with small round brushes and just kind of tap in small areas to make these shapes look a bit different, to add in some different colors, like maybe some leaves, um, just to kind of vary that up so it looks less like wheat and more like sunflowers. Then as I get into some of these bigger shapes where I'm going to start doing bigger sunflowers where you definitely see individual petals, half of the sunflower, or just, you know, parts of it so it starts to look like actual flowers here on the canvas, I'm going to go through all of my rounds. Now, I'm probably not going to use every one of these brushes, but I am going to use a lot of them. When you're painting, you want to make sure you pick an appropriately sized brush, um, also the shape for what you're doing. I like to use flats, large flats, when I'm doing big spaces like the sky or my background colors. But once I start to get into these details, I like to use um, rounds if I'm doing things like petals or leaves. Um, and I'm going to start with my smaller ones back here to give little flowers and stuff, little definitions so they look more like flowers. But as I get into the ones that are here, I might start to move into some of these larger rounds. And then as I get to the big petals in the foreground, I'm probably going to use some of these bigger rounds over here. Like this large one might be perfect for some of these biggest petals that are going to sit here on this sunflower. So I'm going to kind of base it on that, like how big is the petal? which one of these should I use? And like I said, I probably won't use all of them because like these three are pretty much identical, but I'm gonna kind of use like one of these, one of these, one of these, and then maybe the biggest one to do all of these different sunflowers. So the majority of the second row is done, and I really like how it looks. It just needs a little bit more yet, specifically the blending between the first row and the second row, just to make them look cohesive and not like rows of different things. So I'm going to leave it alone for now, work on the third row, and then come back and kind of fix the difference between the two at some point. But I kind of want to start to work on this third one to start to fill in some of this big space. And I'm going to switch from this little round, which is what I did for this row, to doing one of these rounds for the third row. Now these three brushes are very similar in size and shape. Um, the right one's a little bit bigger, I think, and they all have different bristles. So I'm going to try out all three while I'm doing this third row, and at some point I'll probably settle on one of them to do the entire row with.
I'm on to my last layer and I've drawn in all of the centers of the sunflowers. Now on this last layer you could see a lot of the spaces in between and I tried to have less of that and less of that going back in space because you wouldn't see it as well because there's so much flowers in the distance. But here in the foreground you're going to notice a lot more of the spaces in between the flowers. So as I start to fill these in um, I'm going to fill in like the majority first with my darkest color like I've been doing on this last one and then start to see where I need to add in like little half sunflowers in some of these bigger spaces but I do kind of want to leave some of them blank so I can start to fill in leaves and just some dark shadows in those spaces and again I'm switching from my smaller brushes which were row three onto a bigger brush for the last row When I picture sunflowers, I kind of picture them with these two center parts to the center of the flower, um, where there's seeds, but also it's still kind of like going through its life cycle and it's like halfway through. So when I picture sunflowers, that's what I see. So I wanted to bring that to the painting, and I started by painting a solid center color and then mixed a little bit of black into it, and then just started to tap here in the center of the flower with a paintbrush just to make it slightly darker there so there's something else going on and it's not just a solid color. But now that that's done, I can go ahead and start to do the Hansa yellow layer on top. And that's gonna kind of help clean up some of these edges where I didn't paint the center so well. And then I can mix some white into Hansa yellow and then just do the very edges of the highlights. There's a few things I want to work on before I finish this painting completely. The first one is the second row of sunflowers I did here, where I was first painting in individual flowers. It's a little bit different in color compared to these ones, and then the first row, and I think it's just too dark, so if you kind of look at it in general, it just looks darker than the others. So I'm going to use some of my lighter yellows and just kind of go in and maybe lighten some of these areas up so that it blends right where this one starts and then blends with this one here. The second thing I noticed is that the centers of the first row of sunflowers, the last one I did, and then the one before that, these ones are a little bit lighter and these ones are darker, which is fine. I wanted it to kind of be a gradient going back. So I'm just gonna kind of blend some of these together. So like some of these are gonna be just slightly darker and then some of these down here are gonna be slightly lighter. So I get that gradient instead of a harsh line between the two. Lightening up the second row helped a lot. Um, it kind of brought the first and second row together. There's a little bit more I want to do with bringing some of these super light areas down into the second row, but right now the biggest division is between rows two and three. So I'm trying to bring some of the small dark areas up just a little bit into row two just to kind of blend this transition here. So I just have um, some of the darker colors I have from the first row, and I'm just trying to bring a little bit of those dark spaces in between some of these petals just up a a little bit just to kind of make that transition a bit more seamless and I'm gonna bring a little bit more of the light down here to cover up some of these dark areas just to blend that and then like I said I'm gonna bring some of the very light from this first row into the second
I've finished blending the layers and the last thing I have to do is sign my name in the corner, which I'm gonna do with some black liquid acrylic um, in a paint pen. But first I wanted to talk about why this scene in particular was really impactful for me and kind of why I chose to paint it. So I played Mother 3 in Japanese um, like a year and a half or so after it came out. It was like the next summer um, in 2007. And I was at a really low point in my life and I was really like isolated from friends and I didn't really have anyone around. So I imported the game and I played through it. And I didn't know every word. My one year of Japanese from high school helped me in some cases, but a lot of it I just kind of played through and just took in the emotions from the scene, from the visuals, without really knowing exactly what was being said by the characters. And this scene in particular was really impactful. And it always stuck with me. And since then, sunflowers became like one of my favorite flowers. And I've always wanted to paint this. And after Sagan passed away, um, it just felt appropriate. Like I had been waiting for the right time to do it. and. I don't know, now became the right time, so I decided to do this. And I really love how it turned out. I really love these front rows because you kind of get some of the detail of it, and there's just so many flowers here on the canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign my name and finish this up. And we're done. We have the sunflower fields from Mother 3. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster, or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.